Hi, Sarah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Let's, uh, let's just hold on a minute or two in case anyone else is gonna show up. I'm gonna just kind of stall and uh, we'll see. Did you watch yesterday's recording by any chance? No, I didn't. Okay, so we'll, we'll review some of that so you won't have to watch. <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought more people might show up. It's the week before finals, you never know. They might be really busy or thinking about finals, who knows? Okay. All right, um, so um, I don't know if you saw the email, all the quizzes for uh, each chapter are open again. And so if you want to, uh, if you missed one, you can now take it for a grade, or if you, um, if you got a score that's lower than 10, you can take it, take it again. And if you get a higher score, it'll count that higher score. Um, and for the final, I'll reuse questions from the previous chapters. So it's a good way to study for the, the exam. So I, I, that's what I'd recommend to do. Those will be open to either the 7th or the 8th of December. Our final exam will be open on the 9th and 10th of December. Okay, so that's next week. <gasps> okay, uh, let's uh, let's see if I can uh, if we can just look at the schedule. So I'll try and share a screen here. Okay, so do you see the uh, biology one forty five scheduled topics? Yes. Okay, so we started out, and in the first four weeks we talked about science chemistry cells and and uh, homeostasis kind of a background stuff how science works kind of related things to human anatomy and and the organization of the human body so that was chapter one or, or exam one and two then we went over some organ systems the nervous system the endocrine system those control other systems they they are involved with those negative feedback controls and so that was a, a those are major major things uh, we talked about the circulatory system um, and we talked a lot about disease and health so talked about cancer talked about um, diabetes heart disease hypertension those are, are really important things so it's kind of how the human body works what are the, the major problems then after that uh, we kind of talked about what we pass on to to the following generations. So we talked about our reproductive system, how inheritance works, and then the basis of inheritance, which we're kind of learning more and more about all the time is DNA. So we talked about DNA technologies, okay? So <clears throat> all that stuff will appear on the final. Probably figure two to four questions from each chapter. So I won't ask you about new stuff, I'll try and kind of ask you to, to see if you remember about stuff we've already learned, okay? And that'll be about half of the final exam. And the other half will come from these last four sessions, sections, last four chapters, uh, 22, 23, and 24. Um, these are kind of the bigger picture type stuff. Um, how, how do organisms change over time through evolution, how evolution works? Um, uh, populations, human population, animal populations, how, how populations work and how, why we should know about populations, and then ecosystems and communities and, and now human impacts. So it's, it's kind of a, a broader look at things. So the, these last four chapters, that'll be about half the exam and then about the other half will come from that stuff up top, okay? Do you have any questions? So far, so good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's stop this share. Let's see if I can share. So um, I have the, uh, I want to go over a couple things from the, um, the last program. So on the impact chapter, there's lots of, they focus on lots of negative impacts that people have. And the one I spend all the time talking about is is the first one they talk about and that's climate change 
Um, and it's really a good one for us to talk about because it, it's a good one that talks about how evidence works, how science looks at evidence and how we can solve problems. Um, and so, um, so it, it's, it's a really nice kind of review of how science works. And uh, let me see if I can get the right thing here. Uh, one of the key things I've got to kind of mention is, is that there's lots of confusion when we talk about climate because people think climate is, um, sometimes they think climate is weather. Um, you know, if, if, if uh, we have hot days, well, then it can't be a cooling climate. But if we have cold days, then the climate can't be warming. And, and uh, weather is just kind of what's going to happen to you that day, whether it's going to temperature usually and precipitation. Uh, and it's, it's dealing with kind of local variation. But climates are patterns of variation uh, that occur in large regions over long periods of time. So when we talk about climate, we're not talking about the climate around Stockton, Illinois, or the climate of Freeport, Illinois. We're talking about world climate. And even though it can be warmer or colder in one region, it's really averaging things out. Uh, we have tools to do this and ways to do it now that we didn't have before. Um, and, and that's an important thing to kind of recognize is that uh, we can, we have tools that we didn't have, okay? And so for climate change, the big thing is to recognize that we want to look at evidence not in one spot, but of the whole world. And that um, if there's something that's a really, you know, that's talking about climate, we should be able to find lots of evidence. And there is lots of evidence that, that climate is changing and all the changes in one direction. It's towards warming. Um, these, probably the most variable evidence is, is daily air temperature. <laughs> that's, that's the evidence that's most variable and hardest to find the pattern of. But the other types of evidence aren't that variable. They don't fluctuate on a day-to-day -day or even sometimes even a season-to-season -season basis. They, they are things that uh, take long term, you know, decades before they show major change. These include things like sea level changes, okay? Uh, sea level changes very slowly and it's been slowly rising for a long time. Uh, changes in ocean currents, ocean temperature, ocean pH. It's very hard to change that. It doesn't show any daily fluctuation, uh, maybe a little bit near shore, but if we look at something like the Greenland current measured in the same spot year after year, we can, we can see changes in ocean temperature. Uh, things like here, this picture, polar ice caps. Okay, we have good measurements of polar ice caps. Okay, if submarines uh, have been going under there, uh, we have satellite photos now that go back 50 years. Um, we have historical records of, of uh, passages near the coast going back 200 years. Okay, and so we, we see very specific, very large changes uh, that are accelerating and they all point towards warming. Likewise, uh, changes in, in mountain glaciers away from the poles. These are things that take decades to change and they're, they're all changing in the same direction, okay? And so when we, we see these big changes, then we can say, okay, uh, we, we see changes in climate, okay? And the, the you know, the, the, the one thing that, that links all this is that we can see changes in atmospheric composition. And that change most specifically is rising levels of carbon dioxide which is from the burning of fossil fuels. Okay, and so this, um, you know, we're all driving cars. We're all living in houses that are heated mostly with gas or, or electric. Um, and these things all produce carbon dioxide emissions. And as more of the world adopts our standard of living, these carbon dioxide production has increased, emissions have increased, and levels in the atmosphere have increased. And carbon dioxide acts as a greenhouse gas. It prevents the loss of heat to space at night so that overall temperatures rise. Um, and so this, this rising temperature, this, this has a big impact on things overall. Um, and, and there's, I'm not gonna go through all the evidence, but there's, there's lots of it. 
Okay. So this is not something that's new. Uh, we've known about this uh, really for probably about 45 years. And then for about 20 years, people have been saying, okay, this is, we're getting to a point where we have to do something about this. So it's been a long developing problem. Um, carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases come from a variety of sources. So we have to think about those sources. And there's, this involves lots and lots of people and it's gonna take some time to fix. Okay, to do that, it's really important that we be clear about you know, where we get our information, identify potential courses of action, take a very specific look at cost and benefits and then, and then go from there. And so these diagrams are kind of small. I don't know if you can see them, but they show the greenhouse gases, the major greenhouse gases um, uh, by emission, carbon dioxide, methane, um, and nitrous oxide. Those are the main gases. By far, carbon dioxide is the, the, the largest one. And then uh, over to the side, uh, just to the right of that, uh, greenhouse emissions by gas is carbon dioxide emission by source. And so the, the largest sources are electricity generation and then transportation. Cars, buses, trucks, planes, things like that. And then industry and uh, things like residential heating and stuff like that. So, so we see the big sources, where they come from. And then the bottom tells us what countries are the, the major emitters. Uh, and so what we should get from this is there's a, a number of ways to attack the problem. Um, the United States is not the only emitter of greenhouse gases. Okay, we're not even the largest emitter anymore. So we're gonna have to get cooperation with many, many other countries. Um, and, um, you know, but we've gotta re reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And so how are we gonna do this? Um, and uh, I would argue, and I think other people have argued pretty convincingly, that uh, reducing carbon dioxide emissions is key, and that that's going to take some time, but it's doable. Um, and so I want to just kind of share with you some of my story and some of the, the things I found out there. Do you see those two cars there on the bottom? So the one on the left, the silver one, that's a 2003 Honda Civic. That was the first year hybrid cars were available. So that car has a gas engine, but it also has a big battery and a motor. And so the battery can help drive the wheels. And then when the car is coasting, the motor can take some of that energy and put it back in the battery. And when you're braking, instead of having just the old type of brakes that get hot by kind of like the way uh, Bicycle brakes work that squeeze a, a di the, the rim. These brakes work by generating electricity. And so they put energy back in the battery. And so that those were three kind of changes that the car had. So I bought that in 2003 um, and it cost me like an extra $2,000. And you know, at the time it seemed like, oh, that's kind of an iffy thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> because I got this extra battery in. What if that breaks? It's going to cost me, uh, you know, $5,000 to replace. Um, it's supposed to get better mileage, but how much better? Well, uh, so that car right now, I've, uh, I've gotten rid of it, but I drove it for about 170,000 miles. Um, I averaged over 50 miles per gallon. Okay. That's over 20 miles per gallon better than the regular Honda Civic that was for sale at 2003. So I saved almost half of the gas costs, um, which was probably about seven or $8,000. Um, so I saved much more than it cost me. Uh, and it was a really, because it had these electric parts, the motor had to work much less hard and it had a small motor. I never had to replace the exhaust. Um, I never had to replace the brakes because the brakes were all electric brakes. Uh, so I, you know, I, I didn't have, I, I didn't have as much maintenance cost as I thought. And I never replaced the battery. I had the car 12 years, never replaced the battery. So, um, you know, so that was really nice. So I replaced that with the car on the right there. That's a Ford Focus Electric. So it's all electric, 
just battery, no engine at all. So it has no exhaust system, no oil changes, no cooling system. Um, it doesn't have a transmission, it's just an electric motor. So I've had that car now for five years, okay? And that car is even better than the other car, okay? It's even cheaper to run, and I don't even have to go to the gas station anymore. I just plug it in at home. Um, and I can drive 100 miles on five kilowatt hours. Um, and so a kilowatt hour costs me about 13 cents. Uh, so five kilowatt hours cost me 65 cents, and I can drive 100 miles on 65 cents, okay? That's way better. <laughs> it's even better than the other car. It's cheaper, um, and it's it's a very easy car to drive. You know, um, it has, I haven't done any maintenance to it, none. None, it doesn't have anything. I'm gonna have to replace the tires, but no oil changes, no air filters, no exhaust system, it just doesn't have those things. It reduces CO2 use, it's, it's cheaper to operate, it's more reliable, okay? And that's what, what we're going to go. We can reduce carbon dioxide emissions, okay, without having to really hurt ourselves. It's not gonna hurt me to do that, it's actually helped me, I've saved money. And actually, even, even though the government hasn't mandated that we, we reduce CO2 emissions, if you look here, carbon dioxide emissions are falling for, for energy consumption without any government action. Okay, it's just people buying more efficient products. Okay, one of the best ones are light bulbs. Okay, LED light bulbs. The college is completely switched to LED light bulbs. Okay, why? Well, they cost more than regular light bulbs, more than double. Okay, but they use about 95% less electricity. And because they don't heat up like an old style light bulb, they last a long, long time. Okay, and so though, even though it costs twice as much, it's going to last much longer than twice as long. Okay, it's going to last 50,000 hours versus 1,200 hours. Okay, which means over the life of the bulb, it, it's, it, the energy costs and replacement costs are much, much lower. Okay, it's safer. Safer, better, um, less, less monkeying around, putting new bulbs in. Um, and I've done this in my home, did this in my home like seven, eight years ago. I don't replace bulbs anymore. I used to keep a bucket of light bulbs because I was always replacing them. Now I don't because they don't burn out anymore. They burn out so rarely that you don't have to replace them. Okay, and so generally, the you'll hear people say that, oh, you know, our way of life is at stake. We can't can't reduce CO two consumption without ruining our economy, and that's not true. This will ruin the economy for people <laughs> who have jobs dependent on oil. Okay, if if you're an average consumer, things are going to get better your energy costs are gonna drop. You'll have spend less money at the gas station. You'll spend less money on your electric bill. You'll spend less money buying replacement bulbs. It'll be better, okay? Not worse, better. But if you're an oil company, boy, it's gonna be bad <laughs> because if you're an oil company, people aren't gonna buy oil anymore. Um, and it's going faster than you think. Um, this, this is not happening just with people like me here, it's happening all over the country, all over the world. People are recognizing, hey, energy costs a lot, CO2 is bad, I can buy more efficient stuff, I can get to, to work without spending so much at the gas station, okay? So, so it's, it's doable, it's good, it's, it's improvement. And so, um, so you, you know, when you, when you see this, it's important to look at, there's lots of evidence supporting climate change as an idea, a huge amount of evidence, and the solutions aren't as bad as some people might fear. They're actually, uh, in some ways, good ideas that, that we should do, even if we didn't need to reduce CO2, these would be good for consumers, good for the average person. Uh, LED light bulbs last longer, save money, produce better quality light, 
um, and reduce the, you know, reduce your operating costs. And so very, very good. Um, I talk about the solar panels Highland has. Those are, are rapidly paying for themselves. They're gonna, uh, and Highland has a huge energy bill. And they're re they're reducing our energy bill along with our, our change in lighting. So so we're making progress. Do you have any questions? No. No. Okay. So there's lots of um, if you look at chapter 24, there's tons of different kind of problems. The one I'd like you to focus on, actually the first couple are are uh, I'd like you to focus on are um, the climate change. And then they talk about ozone layer and uh, acid rain. And ozone layer and acid rain are, are kind of nice to look at because these were also big problems with emissions that were changing the atmosphere. And there, it hasn't completely gone away, but these were solvable problems. We, we agreed, okay, we're gonna change uh, what kind of coal we burn. We're gonna change how our smokestacks work. So we're gonna get rid of uh, that the uh, sulfur dioxide that's in that emission so that it doesn't cause acid rain. And we've largely been successful at doing that. Uh, same with ozone damaging chemicals. We've largely been able to remove them by you know, switching to chemicals that are less harmful. And so, so uh, what appeared to be a really serious problem was solvable, okay? That involved the whole atmosphere and the whole world but by getting together and working on it, we were, were able to, to kind of deal with that. And then it'll be the same way with CO2. Uh, and it'll, it'll lead to improvements in other areas. Um, rapid improvements happen, you know, it's, it's hard to predict, but um, you know, Tesla will eventually make electric trucks and they will replace the gas powered trucks because they can haul more because they haul more and they're cheaper. <laughs> and so, so, so that'll, eventually people will just switch. They'll say, you know, Ford, that was a great truck for that time, but this is a better truck for now because it's cheaper and it, it carries more and it'll, it'll just be better performance, lower cost. That's the way everybody's gonna go. So it'll take a while, but it'll happen. Okay. All right. So, um, Look at your old quizzes, even if you you know you've got ten on, tens on all of them. Look at them. That's a good way to study. The final exam. I'll send a little warning. It'll open next week, Wednesday, and it'll go Wednesday close Thursday night. Okay. Uh, make sure you finish your forums. Okay, there's some forums left. I don't know how yours are, but there's one left to do. Otherwise, that's it. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the course. Okay. I enjoyed reading the stuff. So I will see you later, okay? Bye. Bye-bye.